Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture video for the subject General Chemistry 1. I am Sir Brian, your lecturer for this session. Before starting, please make sure to have the following. First, your writing materials, which includes your extra sheets or notebooks, and ball pens or pencils. And of course, you need your periodic table. So for this particular session, our objectives are First, name ionic compounds given their formula. Second, write the formula given the name of the ionic compound. So, as you can observe, for this topic, we will be dealing with ionic compounds. So, let's start our discussion. In chemistry, chemicals are expressed using chemical formula. And these chemicals are commonly called compounds. And we have different types of compounds. As you may know, we have uh, covalent compounds, we also have ionic compounds, but how can you identify if the given formula is an ionic compound before you would know how to name, how to write the formula for a specific compound, you should first know what type of compound you are dealing with. So how can you identify if the given formula is an ionic compound? Ionic compounds result from an attraction between a cation and an anion. A cation is a, a positively charged atom, while an anion is a negatively charged atom. So basically, ionic compounds are a combination of a positive and a negatively charged atom. Metals tend to form cation and nonmetals tend to form anion. So metals tend to form positively charged atoms while nonmetals tend to form negatively charged atoms. In your periodic table, uh, elements are divided into metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. So basically, using the periodic table, you can already identify if a given compound is an ionic or not by just checking if that compound is a combination of a metal and a non-metal element. So please refer to your periodic tables and check if in your periodic table, the elements are divided into non-metals, metals, and metalloids. So where are the metals located? So kindly check in your periodic table where the metals are located. On the screen, a periodic table is provided and it's already color coded. You can already locate just by looking into the color of the element where the, the metals, the metalloids, and nonmetals are. So the blue ones are the metal elements which are located on the left side portion of your periodic table, while for the nonmetal elements, they are located on the far right portion of the periodic table, except for hydrogen. So kindly take note of that hydrogen is located here and not on the far right portion of the periodic table. While the metalloids are located here, they are the green ones here in the periodic table. So they are metalloids. They are not metal, they are not non-metal. But most of the time, they are considered metal, non-metal. So in some of our example, we'll be dealing with some metalloids and we will consider them as non-metals. So where are the non-metals located? So in the periodic table, they are located on the far right portion of the periodic table except for the hydrogen. The atoms in the compound has a charge. So that means it's either negative or positive but they also have a numerical value. So how can we identify the numerical value of their charge? To know the charge of a specific element, you can just use your periodic table. I think uh, in your periodic table, the charges for each element are already provided, but uh, there's a shortcut or an easy way for you to identify the charge of an element. So, Let's have a concrete example first. So our first example is lithium oxide. So we know what uh, is the symbol for lithium and it's Li. For oxide, clearly it's oxygen. So it's 
Oh, so let's identify the charges of these two elements. So using the periodic table, let's identify first where lithium and oxygen are located. So lithium is located here and it's a metal element. So that means it has a positive charge while oxygen is located here and it is a non-metal element. So that means it has a negative charge. Now remember that all non-metals have negative charges while metals have positive charges. Now, how would we identify the numerical value of those charges? So, it's very easy as long as you know where it is located. So, let's name this first as first column, second column, third column, fourth column. Now, for the next columns, we will go backwards. So, since this is four, this will be three two and one let's pick this one this should be four so lithium lithium is located on the first column so that means lithium has a positive one charge since this is located here lithium is located on the first column now for the oxygen it is located here and we label this as 2. So that means it has a negative 2 charge. So it's very easy to identify the numerical charges of these elements as long as you know as to what column it is located. Now, uh, let's try this for the other elements. So let's take, for example, magnesium. So what is the charge of the magnesium? So magnesium, since it is located on the second column, that means it has a charge of positive 2. How about sulfur? So sulfur is located here and we label this column as 2. So that means it has a charge of negative 2. How about chlorine? So since chlorine is located here, and we label this as 1, so that means it has a negative 1 charge. So it's very easy to identify the charges of the elements. So let's go back to our example. So we have here lithium oxide and we already know their charges. So first we have lithium and its charge is positive one well for oxygen its charge is negative two now we will already write the formula for lithium oxide so how would we write its formula so first the charges will be the subscript of their partner or we will do a crisscross method so positive one will go here one will go here and will be the subscript for oxygen while 2 will be the subscript for lithium so that means lithium li2o1 but now please remember that if the subscript is 1 you don't need to write already 1 so let's erase this one so that means the formula for lithium oxide is Li2O. So this is the formula for lithium oxide. So for our example lithium oxide, again the formula is Li2O. Now let's proceed to our So for our example number two, we have potassium nitride and that means we are dealing with a uh, potassium element and nitrogen so let's proceed so potassium is k symbol for potassium is k while nitride nitrogen is n now let's locate them here in the periodic table so potassium is here it's a metal element so that means it's positive so k or potassium has a positive charge while nitrogen 
which is located here, that means it has a charge of negative. But what is the numerical value of its charge? So again, we will identify as to what column it is located. So again, we will number this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll go backwards. 3, 2, 1. So that means potassium, since it's located here on the first column, that means it has a charge of positive 1. Well, for nitrogen, since it is located here and it's labeled as 3, so that means it has a charge of negative 3. Okay, so let's. So for potassium nitride, its uh, formula is already shown here. So it's K3N. Okay, so but then uh, let's repeat again the process. So K potassium has a charge of positive 1 and nitrogen has a charge of negative 3. So if we will write this one, we have K positive 1 and N negative 3. Then we'll do the crisscross method. So K will have a subscript of 3 and N will have a subscript of 1. But we don't need to write 1 anymore. So it's not present here anymore. So it's just K3N. So the formula for potassium nitride is this one. Okay. Next. So next example is sodium chloride. So let's uh, locate sodium and chlorine. Since it's chloride, so we are dealing with chlorine and sodium. Symbol for sodium is Na. So let's put them in the periodic table. So Na is located or sodium is located on the first column and it's a metal element. So that means it has a charge of positive 1. Now for chlorine and it's located here. It's a non-metal and it's located on, this is 4, 3, 2, 1. So its charge is negative 1. So they both have 1 as their numerical value of their charges. So it's very simple. If we, even if we will do a crisscross method, it will not be written anymore. So... So for our third example, which is sodium chloride, its formula is NaCl. Now for our fourth example, we have aluminum oxide. So aluminum, let's locate them in the periodic table. And ox oxide, that's oxygen. So the symbol for aluminum is Al. And it's here. And it's a metal element, so that means it's positive. Now let's uh, label first the columns. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, so aluminum is metal, so that means it has a charge of positive three. Well, for oxygen, it's located here, so. It's a non-metal element, so that means it has a negative charge and its numerical value is 2. So, oxygen has a charge of 2, negative 2. While aluminum has a charge of positive 3. So, when we do crisscross method, the subscript for oh, should be AL, not A. Okay, so Al2 from the oxygen and O3. 3 came from the charge of aluminum. So the formula for aluminum oxide is Al2O3. So it's very simple. Now, these are the common mistakes when... Uh, writing the formula for ionic compounds. So first mistake is when you write one as a subscript. So remember that if the subscript is one, do not write anymore. Then again, a common mistake 
for uh, especially students for first timers in naming ionic compounds, they tend to write still the charge of the element. So you don't need to write the charge anymore and make it clear that uh, it is written as a subscript and not a superscript. So it should be below the element. Okay, so so these are some of the practice problems which you can work on in your notebooks. So if you have queries or clarifications regarding these uh, problems, you can post them in the discussion board of our LMS lesson. So let's proceed to our so for our next discussion, we will uh, be naming ionic compounds with transition metal. So what are transition metals? So transition metals are any of various chemical elements that have valence electrons. Valence electrons are electrons that can participate in the formation of chemical bonds in two shells instead of only one. So in the periodic table, transition metals are located on the middle part of the periodic table. They are located here. Most of our examples last time only includes metals which are located here on the far left portion of the periodic table. Now, uh, naming of transition metals is different with that of uh, the other metal elements because for transition metals they have uh, various charges they can have uh, two charges like positive two or positive three it depends on the element so that's why it's uh, different when we deal with transition metals so most of the transition metals can make multiple ions with multiple charges. This is the problem with transition metals, unlike for the other metals which only have one charge. But for uh, transition metals, they have multiple charges. So for example, we have Fe2O3, uh, which includes Fe, which is iron, and O, which is oxygen. So Fe or iron is a metal element, while oxygen is a non-metal element. So that means this is an ionic compound. And uh, iron is a transition metal, which includes various charges. So in this formula, we should know first, or we should identify first, what charge of iron was used in this formula. So we will work backwards for us to know what charge of iron was used. So we have Fe or iron and oxygen. Now since the subscript of oxygen here is three, that means it was the charge of iron. So it's positive three, while oxygen, since the subscript of iron is two, and if we work backwards, we have used crisscross method. So we will just put back two as superscript of oxygen. So that means the charge of oxygen is positive. Or no, it's negative. Let's erase that one. It's negative two. So we use iron with a three positive charge. So that means in naming, we need to indicate the charge. So how's that? So clearly, iron is part of the transition metals. In this slide, you can uh, see uh, some of the common ions that we are using in uh, naming or writing a formula, the formula for the ionic compounds. So you don't need to memorize this one because uh, you already know how to identify the numerical charge of the elements. Going back to our example, which is Fe2O3, we already identified what uh, charge of iron was used. 
in this formula and we identified it as three positive well for oxygen is it's two negative now for oxygen in naming we will just use the ide name of the second element so oxygen is oxide now for the iron we will indicate the charge now we'll put here iron and then we will indicate using roman numeral numbers the charge of the element so it's three so we will enclose that in a parenthesis so the name for this ionic compound is iron three oxide so that's for our first example so first point you need to identify what charge was used in the formula for the transition metal now next one you will just use the ide name of the second element now for the first element which is the transition metal you need to indicate the charge using a roman numeral number which will be enclosed in a parenthesis so it's iron 3 oxide so for our second example we have crbr2 cr refers to chromium and we also have bromine okay now let's identify the charge that was used for chromium so cr is a or chromium is part of the transition metal so chromium since uh, the subscript for bromine is 2 that means that was the superscript for or the charge of chromium so it's positive 2 while for the bromine since uh, cr in this formula doesn't have any subscript that means bromine has a negative 1 charge so very easy it's chromium chromium 2 we'll use a roman numeral and then enclose in a parenthesis and the ide name of the second element so it's chromium 2 bromide so let's check okay so we are right so it's chromium 2 bromide for our third example we have au2s au refers to gold while s refers to sulfur now we need to identify the charges for these two elements so we have au which is gold and we have sulfur now since uh, the subscript for sulfur or we don't have subscript for sulfur that means it's positive one the charge of the gold is positive one while since the subscript for the gold is two that means the charge of sulfur is negative two now since this is one we will name this as gold one and then we will use the ide name of the second element and it's sul fide now the answer that was provided here is aurum one sulfide we use uh, aurum here because it is the latin name of gold and it is also the basis of its symbol so it's aurum one sulfide so you can use both or either of the two so next so for our port example we have co3 and 2 co is cobalt and n is nitrogen now let's identify its charge so since the subscript for nitrogen is 2 that means the charge of cobalt that was used is negative 2 well for nitrogen since the subscript for cobalt is 3 that means the charge of the nitrogen is positive 3 so the name of this compound is cobalt 2 
since the second element is nitrogen, it's cobalt to nitride. So that's how you name ionic compounds with transition metals. So for our fifth example, we have ZnO. Zn refers to zinc, while O refers to oxygen. Now, if you can observe, none of them have subscripts. That means their charges are either one or their charges were the same. Now, please take note, in our last examples, we have used already oxygen. And the charge for oxygen is negative 2. So since the charge of oxygen is negative 2, we can conclude therefore that the charge of zinc is also 2. So it's positive 2. That's why none of them have subscripts because their charges were cancelled because they have the same charges. Now, take note that not all transition metals have multiple charges like for example zinc zinc do not have multiple charges it has a charge of positive two only so that means that when naming trans uh, compounds or ionic compounds with transition metals that do not have multiple charges you don't need to specify its charge using a roman numeral number so for this uh, particular example this will be named as zinc oxide. So we don't need to specify its charge using a Roman numeral because zinc do not have multiple charges. So for our next example, we have VCO32. So V refers to vanadium and CO32 is this is an example of a polyatomic ion so we are now trying to name an ionic compound which involves a transition metal and a polyatomic ion so these are some of the examples of polyatomic ions we have ammonium we also have carbonate hydroxide nitrate nitrite we also have phosphate sulfate and sulfite so there's no other way for you to identify a polyatomic ion but only by memorizing these polyatomic ions. So in our last example, we have CO32. So that's carbonate and it has a charge of 2 negative. So let's go back to our last example. We have vanadium. We also have carbonate. And we know that the charge of the carbonate is negative 2 based on the chart that we have seen in the last slide. Now, checking into their subscripts, vanadium doesn't have any subscript. So that means that the charge of the carbonate should be positive 1, but should be negative 2. So what could have happened? why the formula is like this so since we know that carbonate has a charge of negative 2 that means that the subscript of vanadium should be 2 now please take note that formulas can be reduced if the subscripts are still divisible so let's take for example uh, carbonate here will have 4 as its subscript, meaning vanadium should have a positive 4 charge. Now, we can reduce this one into V since 2 and 4 are still divisible by 2. So let's divide them by 2. So V CO3 So this is the same with this, and that means that the charge of vanadium is 4. So 
the answer for this is vanadium 4 carbonate. So for you to test, if you have really understood the lesson, you can uh, have this or answer these practice problems in your notebooks or in a separate sheet. And then you can uh, post your answer or your queries or clarifications in the discussion board of our LMS lesson. So the answers for the practice problems are provided here already. So you can uh, check your answers with the answers provided here. And if there are some clarifications or questions, you can post them in the discussion board. And you can also try uh, naming these compounds. And these are the answers. And for queries or clarifications, feel free to use the discussion board in your LMS accounts. So that's it for uh, this uh, topic. For the next video, you'll be learning how to name and write formula for covalent compounds. So please uh, take note that in this video, you should have learned how to name and write the formula for ionic compounds. So see you on the next video.